Howdy all you delicious people, I'm here today to view The Sandman, Season 1, Episode 7 and 8. So, I know I was supposed to go on and, and try to put these reviews out every single day, and I wanted to try to achieve that, but then, like, what kind of massively derailed this uh, was simply that my Wi-Fi hasn't really been working, and so I kind of do everything through a tablet, and, uh, yeah, so... Eventually, what happened quickly explaining this, uh, Wi Fi is not working, so I'm kind of tethering and hotspotting everything through a phone, um, through a cell phone. And so, yeah, like it's lucky that I am to go on and get things out when I'm to get things out because man, does that take quite a lengthy stretch of time, um, to go on and try to put a video out this way, um. So yeah, that really sucks, but hopefully uh, the Wi-Fi situation will, I'm assuming, will get corrected today because uh, made an appointment to, to talk to the uh, people and everything about this whole that whole situation, so hopefully that'll get covered. So, uh, so with that said, uh, let's go on into covering these episodes. So... We kind of just bring in a character, just... We just randomly just bring in a character and just say that she's really important. And I'm just like, okay... <laughs> sure, just just plop in anybody whenever you want and just say that they're vital and important to the story. But then have them really, like, have so much being put into the story that you kind of forget that the Sandman even exists. I'm like, man, like... The way in which that they approach this show and the co and the 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 comic book slash story, like we kind of forget that Sandman even exists in the show. <laughs> we have to focus on so many other things that like the Sandman ends up being like second fiddle to everything, uh, and I just think that that's so weird for a person who's a lead uh, for <laughs> this whole story. Anyways, so we have some Easter eggs kind of going on a little bit into these episodes, and I will mention them now. Um, we, of course, have Jed, who is to be wearing the ruby uh, with his costume, uh, and I'll go on and talk about that hopefully a little bit more when we get into episode 8. There is also a reference of a villain character called Pied Piper, who is actually not the Sandman villain. That is actually the Flash's villain. That, of course, I'm not quite sure in more recent comic books is to actually be used. But, um... Eventually, when that name popped up, I'm like, why does that name sound so familiar? Because Pied Piper is a fairly common name uh, that ends up getting used in a lot of, like, supernatural shows and whatever. So... Uh, so yeah, but regularly, uh, Pied Piper is a Flash villain, and so Pied Piper also gets used in other shows, um, like specifically, uh, Ghostbusters ended up going on and doing some cartoon stuff that, uh, was to either be the real Ghostbusters or extreme Ghostbusters, and eventually Pied Piper in somewhere in there, uh, I think was to be used in the extreme Ghostbusters, uh, show, so... There's that for you. Uh, eventually, it ends up getting used, I think, in a lot of supernatural stuff. But anyways, let's push on. So, uh, but yeah, other than that, we have Desire, who is to go on and talk to one of her sisters uh, within one of these episodes. And, of course, we have Dot Desire, who is to um, be kind of turning and looking at this certain kind of mask that kind of uh, goes into this almost like beak kind of uh, way about it. And while I was looking at that helm briefly, I'm like, well, like it obviously doesn't look similar to a Dr. Fate kind of helmet because I've seen Dr. Fate helmets kind of look all kinds and shapes and whatever. Uh, it would actually make a lot of sense for Dr. Fate to be involved in this show, but... I've seen so many times where Dr. Fate is to be um, kind of referenced in things like the Constantine show, but never actually used. 
uh, I think in Young Justice, they eventually have Dr. Fate, uh, like, have a full episode in there. Um, but yeah, like, Dr. Fate is always a guy that kind of comes in and eventually says, like, hey, this is Nacho Fate and scoops uh, people out, uh, like in Smallville or eventually in also some of the, the Justice League cartoons. Uh, but anyways, moving on. So we have a character being reused from episodes before. And in my brain, I was thinking, like, how old was this character when she is to supposedly be pregnant? I'm a little confused. Um, didn't quite make sense to me to see this character and see the fact that she possibly had a baby. Didn't make sense, but it is what it is. Um, also... I kind of feel like Rose Walker is to just be plopped into this story and then we're just having the story being carried by her. And I'm like, OK, like they made this character out to be very important fairly quickly. And I'm like, OK, they're just plopping stuff down that <laughs> like I didn't really like that, but I like the character's story. Uh, I'm enjoying that. It's really interesting and, and, and cool. Uh, we also are getting a, a lot more uh, like darker, darker things going on in these episodes. And I thought that that was kind of cool. But here's the weird goofy thing. I guess when we have the Corinthian uh, who ends up getting more uh, more time in the sun uh, via these episodes... And having him get, delivering us like this darker side of things, I guess to try and offset that, we also have the Rose Walker story and what ends up uh, going on with uh, Jed also to kind of balance that. But I just think it's kind of weird because it feels like what target audience you're trying to, to hit here because <laughs> you're doing stuff uh for an adult audience but then you're also like you're trying to find stuff for the kids also and it's just like this should probably mostly be like an adult audience not a uh like a family kind of show but anyways it is what it is uh plus this is also a comic book story and so me saying this here is just me saying this here so anyways to try to avoid to make this whole stretch of thing far too long uh i'm gonna try to try to cut this here and then just try to get into spoilers because there's a lot going on in these episodes even though it feels that it's like very focused and when i mean focused uh that feels thin because like you're kind of leaving even out like the title character for the show to have him do stuff um because I guess basically after he goes on and gets all of his stuff back, he's like, well, I got nothing. I, I, I got nothing. <laughs> now I'm just going to putz around and just meh, like, figure out how to just finish this show because I just got nothing now um, for the main character. Uh, so eventually, like, the dream, I guess, has to finish up this show through other characters. And I'm like, okay, that's a weird way to wrap up a show. But anyways, so... But I guess it gives the Sandman something to do at some point. Pushing on. So, uh, let's go on into the double five time territory. Uh, let's just go on and go into spoilers. I know I didn't do it really much of a tee up at all. Uh, so, we have Rose Walker that goes on to uh, eventually be this kid who is somehow tied to not only the real world, but the dream realm. And she is to be now bizarrely just the chosen one. And she is to, of course, have her own story that involves a character from previous episodes that we saw at a very brief glimpse. But then also there is to be a tie of uh, Rose to now finding this other uh, character that is to, of course, be her brother. And so there ends up being a whole story about that. And then Sandman kind of goes on and is like, well, I guess I'll go on and, and help this character out because she's vital to my dream world. 
for some reason that doesn't seem to be clearly defined within the show, because what the f is a vortex exactly? You're just saying a random term for something that I'm like, okay, what is what does this mean? And no one else in the dream realm knows what a vortex is either. And <laughs> great way to just just put some out there. To, I'm like, what? Hmm? What's going on? Vortex? Uh, what a what a creative word. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for, of course, Neil that went on and uh, wrote this story, and I'm and I'm making fun of it. Um, but also speaking of Neil, the guy who originally created the Sandman, uh, when I went on and, and watched TV today, I watched a, an episode of Big Bang Theory that had Neil in it, the guy who created uh, the Sandman, and he was cameoed in Big Bang Theory, and I thought that that was kind of cool. I'm like, okay, like, of course, we're going on and having Big Bang Theory give us specific episodes uh, that are tying into current events. So it could be like, oh, hey, yeah, that's some cool pop culture stuff. Every once in a while when there's a like a Nathan Fillion thing going on, eventually they showcase the Nathan Fillion episode or so on and so forth. There's a number of different celebrities that are that have all kind of plopped their way into that show at some point. But anyways, so, but now the show is over, sadly. So, let's go on into eventually just going into spoilers. Uh, let's go out of our way to say it's about that time. Again, let's go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time we're going to spoil this episode. I didn't even try to, like, tee it up with this one. I apologize, but I kind of went there, but I really heavily pulled out, pulled back. There's so much going on in these episodes anyways uh, that eventually anything I'm going to, like... Uh, mentioned it's like it's never going to be enough because there's so much going on so with that said let's go on into this episode so i feel like there's kind of moments that i just want to get out of the way and i just want to cover even if it doesn't go on to be like the flow of the episode uh because i think there's cooler things going on and eventually i might mention them fairly early um because I thought they were cool. So we go on and in the beginning of this episode, we have Dream who is going on and reading a book that is to be called Rose Walker. It's like, okay, what does this mean? And so we have Dream just reading this book and then he closes it. And then we just transition right to Desire who is going on and talking to her sister Despair. And... I honestly think it's kind of cool when you kind of look at like some of these characters and how they have their like drastically different uh, kind of looks and whatever. They're not like all the same, even though I'm like death, like just throws on a tank top and <laughs> like, really, that's that's death for you. <laughs> just throws on a tank top and uh, a necklace and like, seriously, that's it. Like you couldn't have been a little bit more creative. Uh, but, uh, it is what it is, I guess. Hey, like, when looking at it, anybody can go on and easily cosplay as her if you want to attempt that. Uh, <laughs> might as well. Um, so, Desire is going on and talking to Spare, and Despair is to go on and point to the fact that there seems to be some kind of, uh, mask, uh, that is to be put upon this kind of trophy case and we have this kind of an Egyptian symbol uh, at some point within this kind of uh, cluster of trophies and I think it would be kind of cool to see what all those trophies mean at some point uh, and maybe there probably is a explanation for all of those uh, that I didn't go on and, and check into or look into but anyways so Desire is going on and talking to Despair and is to look at this helmet and Desire is like, oh yeah, like that is to uh, possibly be coming up soon, but uh, really we're just going to go on and instead of talking about the helmet, uh, whatever that'll be, we're instead going to go on and talk about this newcomer who is to eventually be Rose Walker, who in the dream world is to somehow be the Vortex. That is to be in this dream world, whatever the f that means. I'm not smart enough. I'm not intelligent enough. Heaven forbid I even go into a definition 
and Google whatever vortex means. I'm like, okay, that's just some random word that they just have to justify here. So, again, uh, so then after that moment, I'm like, what are, what do all these scenes mean? <laughs> it just feels like we're getting these, like, little trickles of stuff that I'm just like, okay, <laughs> like, what does that matter? <laughs> what does any of these scenes mean? Huh? <laughs> Eventually, they'll accumulate to something uh, more like ah down the road. But until that time, I'm just like, okay, like just keep plopping all these scenes down in the beginning of this to just be like, okay, I guess this is where the story is going. Both uh, the side of good and the side of possible evil, because uh, we don't know uh, Desire's exact mo like motives here. But so. We have this story being focused on Rose Walker, so we have to figure out who this character is. So, we go on to have Rose Walker, who has a ma, or a mother, called Miranda. So, come to find out, it seems that Rose and Miranda are to also have a brother-slash-son uh, called Jed. And so, what is going on with this story is... It seems that Miranda and Rose are to want to leave town, and it seems that Jed's father is not willing to let go of Jed and wants to keep Jed here. And so Miranda is kind of conflicted right now, and so she goes on and is to, of course, tell Rose, it's like, well, hey, it seems that your father really wants Jed and so we're going to have to give in to his wishes and keep Jed here and have us just go on uh, to make our way uh, to travel without him. And Rose is like, no, like, you're pulling me away from my brother. And uh, we have uh, this moment, of course, of uh, Rose being fairly upset. So... What ends up happening is we, of course, go on into this episode and what happens is, is that Miranda ends up dying for some reason. And so Rose ends up with a girl named uh, Lita Hall, which I don't know what any significance this character really has, but it seems that she's going to have her own story within these episodes if we don't really have enough stories. The bulk of what ends up happening with uh, Lydia here, um, or Lydia, uh, could be Lida. I don't remember. Uh, Hall. Uh, I'm just going to keep saying Hall because that works. So we have both Rose and Hall that are, that are now um, together here. And so... Eventually, both Rose and Hall are, as if I'm saying Hall and Oates, uh, we have these characters that are going on this plane to need to go on and meet up with a woman named Unity, which, if this name may briefly sound familiar to anybody, within a number of episodes, we had a girl who was to have the sleep sickness, and she was in a coma, and we end up seeing this one father who is trying to wake his daughter and saying, love, unity. And she, of course, does not wake. So they end up kind of replaying uh, that part of the scene uh, for us in the show. Because, of course, we probably didn't remember that scene. Because we can't ha hold on to everything and immediately think that everything has some significance. But it's kind of cool when eventually it's caught to just like, aha, like you didn't have paid complete attention to that scene. And now <laughs> you're going to regret it. Um, but yeah, of course I didn't because I was like, OK, who is this character? Eh, I don't care. Uh, so we go on and we have Rose and, L and Elita who make their way on this plane, and so while Hall is to fall asleep, we have her talking to some guy named Hector. I kind of 
ruined the the kind of the reveal here but i like i'll, I'll just considering this is spoilers if you've seen the show you've seen it if you haven't you had it so we have hall that goes on and is to talk to a guy named hector i believe who is to go on and eventually uh say here really uh to ask about rose uh hall's girl and eventually while they're talking and kind of uh making a conversation about rose hall is to go on and say that uh she probably feels uh kind of stressed so much so that she is going on and talking to her dead husband and eventually once she wakes up from the stream she realizes that her husband is now not in the seat next to her because that was actually her dead husband. And so it's like, okay, it feels like college is talking to some stranger and come to find out this guy is actually important to her because I guess when this girl is stressed, she just has these consistent dreams about uh, her dead husband. To the point of we have Hall going on and basically uh, sleeping with her husband in these dreams uh, going on and having her husband say that he has gone on to build a whole life uh, for Hall to come home to and that Hall is consistently trying to uh, be pulled away by Hector. So Hector is trying to pull away Hall to come to this dream world and stay and Hall is like, no, I can't. I have like responsibilities like I like it's going to kind of get to the point where like Hall is going to have to rip her arm off in this metaphorical scenario to tell Hector, no, like stop. Like I can't do this anymore. Like I have responsibilities and I need to go on and do those. I have to, I have to focus on uh what's real and eventually when i die maybe i'll come back to you one day that will probably be this story how that kind of wraps up but so hector has gone on and built a whole entire dream house for hall to just be like ooh swoon and eventually hall is to want to be in this uh imaginary world which is technically the dream world and so Eventually, we have a whole thing about that, that kind of, they keep coming back to that. So, we go on to have Rose, who meets uh, a woman named Unity. And, of course, Rose has Hall with her. So, Rose gone, goes on to meet with Unity and come to find out. Unity, when she was to go on and have the sleep sickness, she was to go on and have a child, and that child ended up being Miranda. And so, coincidentally, Unity is now Rose's grandmother. So, now we go on to have unity with these endless resources it seems that somehow unity is filthy stinking rich for some reason and i'm just kind of waiting for us to find out that unity isn't rich after all and she's just going on and trying to do all these things um and she doesn't have the money for any of it and she's just kind of throwing money uh, uh into the furnace so to speak uh because she doesn't really have it uh, she just wanted to eventually be with this girl, but maybe by the time that she's really with her and everything's going perfectly fine, maybe Unity will pass away. Wouldn't that suck? Uh, cause I'm assuming that's probably how the story might go. Anyways, pushing on. So, Rose is to eventually go on and talk to Unity and at some point mention her brother and now that Rose has connected herself with Unity, now Rose has to complete the family by finding her brother Jed. And so Rose is to go on and find this new picture of Jed. And considering it makes uh, Rose realize that this is an older picture of Jed, 
that this could be what currently he looks like. So, Rose is to try to talk to Unity about finding Jed, and Unity's like, well, of course, I want to meet my grandson. Like, go on and, and find your brother. Like, whatever it takes, go on and find him. So, we also go into this episode, and we have Lucienne that is starting to go on and do a count of all of the characters uh, to see who is kind of left in the dream world. And Lucienne is to talk to Abel, and Abel is to bring up Goldie. He doesn't end up calling it Irving, he just calls it Goldie. So Abel is to go on and tell Lucienne that it seems that he was to stumble upon this thing that looked like a vortex, and Abel is to go on and ask Lucienne about it. And Lucienne is like, ah, no, like, uh, what you're thinking is not really true. Like, uh, what you're seeing is not really right. Like, I, I think you're just wise tales and so on and so forth. So, Lucienne, everybody is to, of course, know that this vortex is happening within the dream world. And Lucien is trying to keep everybody calm so that way they don't lose control because they don't know what's going on in their dream world. But they, but Lucien just want to wants to keep the whole vortex thing hush hush. So Sandman is to put in place this vortex thing so that way it seems that the Sandman can go on and possibly repair the dream world slowly but surely. So eventually we have Dream who is talking to Lucien. And after Lucienne is to go on and do this head count, she eventually tells the Sandman who is all missing. So, we go on into this story, and we end up uh, knowing about a character named Galt, who is to eventually be this nightmare character that we come to find out is trying to change her stripes to eventually be this different kind of character. But that ends up being the first one that uh, Lucienne says is mitch missing. And then, of course, the character act after that we've already known has been missing. And, of course, that is the uh, Corinthian, who, of course, is to have his own kind of story uh, within these episodes. And then we also go on and have a guy named... Um, uh, Fiddle Green, um, and immediately I'm just like, okay, like, uh, these characters are interesting. So, I believe it's Fiddle Green. Um, so, the actual character's name I think is Gilbert, which we'll, uh, talk about him when eventually that, uh, ends up coming up. Uh, so, that's how, like, those things are kind of tied together. So, we have the dream, we have dream, of course, that it's to realize that all three of these characters are to be a thing that the dream is at some point going to manage and, and get back and so on and so forth. But I'm assuming every single one of these characters are going to be somehow tied to this Rose's story, and it probably makes all sense to the world to eventually um, do it that way, to just kind of give uh, some obstacles uh, to go against this story. So, we have, of course, the Sandman who uh, is to eventually go on and tell Lucien that they need to hopefully hopefully figure out a way to have Rose not go on and have anything that is to make her uh, kind of concerned about anything that's going on in the real world or the dream realm. Um, so that way, like, Rose can kind of just keep helping out the dream world without her realizing it. So... We get to a point where Matthew is to be sent to go on and watch over uh, Rose and kind of really just almost report everything that's kind of going on with this girl. And so, so we have Lucienne who is talking 
to uh, Merv, who, of course, is to be voiced by Mark Hamill. Merv, uh, Merv the Pumpkinhead. And we have Matthew that is going on and talking to Merv. And Merv, of course, is saying that uh, Matthew is to be this rookie. And uh, and Matthew's like, well, hey, just, just tell me what uh, I should be looking out for uh, to have to report to you guys. And eventually Marv is just like, well, hey, like anything that just kind of seems like out of place or whatever. And eventually Matthew is like, well, that sounds like anything. And so eventually Matthew goes on through all these portraits of, of people with all clothes on, uh, makes his way back to the real world where he, of course, is to watch over Rose. So we have a story with the Corinthian within these episodes. So it seems that we have a number of characters here that are to be called Nimrod, the good doctor and Funland. And so these three characters are to be putting on this show. And so it seems that Nimrod is to go on and tell these other two that it seems that this guy called the family man had canceled upon this show so it seems that they need to go on and put in another act besides this guy and so they're trying to think of who would be the perfect candidate to make up for the lack of there being the family man and so nimrod ends up mentioning characters like the candy man or uh, eventually, I think, another character that I don't remember the name of. So eventually they're like, no. Like, so eventually what comes up is like, well, like, who is the character that we would all just really want uh, to be put on to the show? And immediately everyone is to go on and say the Corinthian. And so... They're going on and saying that, of course, like the Corinthian that is to be the one that is this character now is to, I guess, be the newer version, the, the latest version. And so, uh, like, they say that simply because this guy is to look far too young uh, to be the age that he is to have to be, which is 130. So... We have Nimrod who is telling the good doctor, it's like, well, how do we go about like luring this guy out? Because we've gone and tried to get him before, but he's just continuously not interested. And so the good doctor goes on and tells uh, Nimrod, it's like, well, hey, how about we go on and just copy uh, how he kills people to eventually lure him out? And so Nimrod's like, we can't do that, can we? Plus, we also have to be, like, very, like, specific about how we go about this because, like, we need to go on and, like, do, like, the, a perfect copycat of this. And so, it also feels like the background that these guys are in, it feels like they just reused it from the diner from episodes before and they just, like, kind of cleaned it up a bit. They kind of added more stuff into it and they repainted it. And made it a smidgen bit different. Uh, but it honestly looks the exact freaking same as the diner from episodes before. So it probably was. Because they probably took that whole week or whatever. Uh, to kind of repave that whole set. And kind of quickly just clean it up as best they can. Uh, and put the word mics on the, on the side of things. That really changes everything, right? Uh, <laughs> even though it looks like the same exact diner. Uh, it does. Anyways, so... Eventually, the good doctor is to go on and take the waiter and pop out his eyes. And eventually have that be the first victim. And so, eventually, Nimrod, Funland, and the good doctor are to continue to do all of these copycat kills. And it seems like they're going on and really trying to uh, lure the uh, Corinthian out. So, we eventually have the Corinthian that is to try to track down Rose Walker also. 
if everyone else kind of has their hands in the same kind of uh, place here. So we have the Corinthian that goes on to speak with a guy named Carl, who is house sitting uh, for uh, both Hall and Rose. So we have the Corinthian that goes on and is to sleep with this guy. And then is to, I'm assuming, turn around and kill this guy. So, the Corinthian then is to spot within certain websites that there is a person that uh, is to be uh, similar, similar to the deaths that the Corinthian is doing, but he didn't do that kill. So, the Corinthian easily figures it out who was to go on and kill all these people and is to be all these these Nimrod, Funland, and the Good Doctor. So the Corinthian goes on to eventually meet with these characters after they've gone on and again done some copycat kills. And so the Corinthian is to go on and say like, well, hey, I'll go on and I'll do this whole like dog and pony show and whatever. Um, as long as I want to have a certain person being, uh, like, kind of put up for this. And that, of course, is to be Rose Walker. Because eventually, the Corinthian is to easily know when something is going on in the dream world. And so he's going to try to affect that in any way of which that he can. So eventually, that seems to be where the Corinthian is going uh, with his story. So... We have Rose that is to go on to this uh, this kind of uh, B and B uh, where they meet up with Hall Carter. So Rose eventually is to go on and meet uh, a number of people that is to be living with Hall. Uh, we have these two characters that dress the same, and we, of course, have to come to the conclusion that um, they're either sisters or lovers or siblings or, or something. They don't really know. Uh, I think both these characters are Chantel and Zelda, I believe, are the two characters, bizarrely. We also have Barbie and Ken that are both weirdly uh, also at this B&B. &B, and when eventually they're like, Barbie and Ken, really? And Ken goes on and say, like, yeah, I know it's goofy, but like somehow we just found one another and it just works. So we, of course, go on and have Rose who's to meet all these people right away. So, when we go on to eventually have Rose, who eventually uh, has this get-together with all these people, at some point, uh, Rose is to then uh, turn around and go to this nightclub where we find Hall Carter, who has changed to eventually become this kind of drag-like character and is doing this performance and so on and so forth. And we have this kind of fun little moment uh, that eventually kind of plays out in Hall's dream sequence, which eventually we'll get that, where when uh, Rose finally gets to go into the dream world and knows what's going on, she then starts to go into every one of her Airbnb characters' dream sequences, and we get a funny barrage of different kind of things uh, within these sequences. But anyways, so we have Rose, that after she leaves this club, she is to meet these two men that I guess maybe want to mug her or uh, try to hurt her in some way. And all of a sudden, that's when we end up getting Gilbert that ends up appearing here as this, uh, as the Riddle Green or the, uh, no wait, the uh, Fiddle Green? Fiddle Green. 
Let me go on and double check that so I can be right about it. Fiddler's Green. Please, no one go on and just continue to correct me because eventually I'll get it right in the episode. <laughs> I know it's tempting for everyone to go on. It's Fiddler's Green. I got it. I, it we got it, everybody. Uh, sometimes names don't really matter at, at every point, but I end up saying Gilbert consistently. I hope that came out every single time I was to say the character's name, even when I was to get it wrong. But eventually I said Gilbert. So that... Give me that. So... Fiddler's Green. There we go. What a goofy name anyways. <laughs> Hence why I wanted to say Riddler, because we had a character that is to be green from the images of which I saw. So I was like, okay, Riddler's green? Fiddler's green? Anyways, Fiddler's green is the correct name. My apologies. So, we go on and have Gilbert, who is to meet Rose in this dark alley, and is to consistently ask Rose, it's like, hey, do you need a, th do you need a hand? Do you need some help? And Rose is going on and tell uh, Gilbert, it's like, no, I'm fine. Like, I can take both these guys. And so Rose goes on and starts going on and, and breaking bottles over these guys' heads and so on and so forth and takes them out. And Gilbert's like, well, I guess you're right. I guess you didn't need help. And so uh, the Fiddler's Green ends up going off here and we never see him again, uh, it seemed, uh, for the most point. So... I was like, what, what was the point of having that character there? Another wasted opportunity. <laughs> so, but, uh, so here's the thing. We then go on and, of course, we have the Sandman who eventually is to start talking about how Jed is to seem to have no record of him dreaming or anything like that. And as if this guy has somehow disappeared from the dream world. And so when the Sandman is to go on and take an interest in Rose, he then has to turn around and start to f figure out this mystery of why Jed is to not be dreaming. That seems fairly odd. As if someone has snatched him away and so Lucienne is to start to understand or rationalize that Galt was to be the culprit of Jed going on and not being in the dream world like he should. And the more and more they start talking about Jed, they keep bringing up Jed, they keep saying the name Jed. All of a sudden, we have now Rose, who is in the dream world, who is to be like, Jed what now? And all of a sudden, Rose just arrives, and she's talking to the Sandman. And we now have, like, the Sandman that is going on and saying, like, well, yeah, like, it seems that your brother um, is uh, to be taken from the dream world. And now I have to go on and figure out why. And, uh, and so Rose is kind of stubbornly like, well, I want to go on and I want to figure this out. And so the Sandman is telling Rose, it's like, well, okay, like, you and I, like, tomorrow night will go on and solve this whole thing together. And so, eventually what happens is we go on and we have Rose, who is to see the dreams of all of her B&B &B people, whether they are good dreams or horrific. Um, and so... What ends up happening is Rose, and I don't think that this happens in this actual episode, but we're going to uh, kind of get to that anyways. So to kind of uh, get this all out of my brain, uh, so hopefully I can push it out here. So Rose go goes on to start to see a lot of her people's dreams. So she sees Hall going on and doing it with Hector and Hall goes on and is to say, hey, Rose? And then she, like, starts, stops doing it. Um, we have... When Rose goes into uh, Hal Carter's dream, come to find out he is to be... Uh, one guy that is to be in his bed. And he is to be one performer that is to be on this stage. And we start to see Hal, uh, or Hal here, 
that starts peeling off his faces to say that he is to either be this performer or he is to be this man or maybe he's neither and he's just this skull and bones and all of this kind of uh like looks like maggots or something coming off of him and it's to be very horrific and hall is going on and looking at this person's face and is mortified so and again we then have rose who kind of interrupts this guy's dream and we again have hall or hal that calls out for rose here so we have ken's dream that is weirdly uh barbie is locked into this car with ken's clothes and ken won't let or barbie won't let ken go back into this car and so ken is desperately trying to go on and get into this car and is trying to knock on the door and saying barbie hey let me in and so like there's that about that dream so the Sandman then finally appears after uh, we, of course, have Rose going into Zelda's dream. And Zelda is doing this, like, public speaking thing where she all of a sudden gets interrupted by Rose, who is to kind of walk through uh, to get into this door to meet up with Sandman. So the Sandman, of course, is going on and telling Rose that... Like, since now, like, Rose is kind of going into the dream world and, like, things are getting mixed up. The Sandman is going on and telling Rose that all Rose needs to do is kind of control what's going on. And be able to figure out how, um, like, she can control where she's going here. So, eventually Rose, I think, is to go into Barbie's dream. And, weirdly, we have, I think, Barbie who is going on and having this dialogue um, with this kind of bear-looking thing that eventually is going on and talking to Barbie. And so we... And if that's not, like, bizarre enough, um, we... Of course, have to then, um, I think it might have been Holdaway, Mr. Holdaway, maybe, uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, anyways, pushing on. So, because I don't remember, I don't remember the, the creature's name. I think she ended up saying it, but it was so bizarre. Uh, so anyways... Rose goes on to want to try to get into Jed's dream. That seems to be the focus here. And so now we have to go in and start talking about Jed. So Jed, by the end of this episode, we have Jed, who is between two uh, parents here. It seems... That Jed is to be adopted by this family, who the only reason why they're going on and putting up with this kid is so that way they can get the $800 every month to support this kid. So we have Barnaby and Clarice that are dealing with this kid. So we, of course, have Jed, who is to want to get out of this vehicle to try to want to run away from this family. And so Clarice is telling Jed, it's like, well, hey, you better get in my car before Barnaby shows up and he tries to grab you and, and take you. Like, I won't be as nice as he will kind of thing. So eventually when Barnaby shows up, he is to be a guy that answers everything with a, a belt to his hands. And so... Jed ends up getting so scared that he is to be forced to go into this trunk of Barnaby's car to make his way back um, to the house for Jed to continue to be tortured or to be threatened by Barnaby, who's to go on and say, it's like, well, hey, if you don't do everything that we're going to say, I'm going to um, 
I'm going to strap you down and I'm going to break all your bones. Wow, what a horrific threat. So, <laughs> anyways. So, we go on into this story and have Jed. That, uh... Is to now be in a home that he doesn't want to eventually to the point where uh when we do have this uh this one woman who is uh to be this orphanage woman that is going on and this like halfway house kind of woman uh she eventually takes it upon her own to find out where jed is living to kind of see how his living conditions are and possibly get an updated uh, thing of information so this girl can visit this home to see how things are going. We also, in this episode, have eventually Rose also, while going through these dreams, she is to meet with the kindly ones, or the three, and eventually while Rose is going on and ask these girls questions, the three end up mentioning to her, it's like, well, hey, you could have really gone on and asked some very important questions like what is going on with your brother or where is he or any other questions that really could have helped her out um and like the three kind of explain to her like that uh like rose is to have this certain ability that she's important in the dream world and like so rose is starting to like uh starting to understand things be it talking to these girls more a little bit anyways so let's roll on in to the uh the next episode as as best as we can because more than likely i'm thinking that there's also a bajillion things that i also forgot about uh that i'm gonna have to go on and, and try to uh remember here it's like uh, what about this point? What about that point? What about that moment? Um, so, but we also had Matthew that is in the real world, and he eventually goes on and does talk to Rose, and does, like, give her a heads up where, like, the Sandman is to go on and and be like away doing what he's doing and Matthew is just going to be there to watch over Rose and kind of report back at some points and that also the Sandman is technically in Matthew's head uh if there is ever to really be trouble here that the Sandman can just kind of appear at a whim and whatever so but Matthew is to kind of give Rose a heads up that he's going to help her out and at some points when Rose continues to see this bird, she immediately thinks, oh, is that Matthew? Is he going to uh, tell me something? Is he? Uh, did the Sandman figure something out? So let's go on. So for this episode, we have Galt, uh, who actually I think was also on the Krypton show. So, man, did these Warner Brothers characters, they just continue to recast uh, to have certain people just come back on other things. And, like, it's there always has to be that thing one way or the other. When really looking at it, uh, you have a number of people that are from Game of Thrones, which is basically HBO Max, is that's another Warner Brothers thing. So, like, we recast all the in time heaven forbid you could recast a, a certain kind of constantine at a certain point you know what i'm saying <laughs> god are you still on that yeah because really when looking at it i didn't like other ones anyways plus also there's obviously a lot of certain sites that are immediately saying like, hey, yeah, you know, Lucifer, like the Lucifer, that was the show Lucifer. <laughs> like we're really trying to piggyback off of like retroactively uh, bringing up other things that happened in the past to be connected to the show. So like, hey, guys, like check out Lucifer because that's a way better show um, as far as the Lucifer character is concerned. 
And hey guys, check out the show Constantine. You gotta check out that show. It seems, or the the Keanu Reeves movie that is blowing up on Netflix right now. Because of course it is. <laughs> so, anyways, we have Galt uh, being used in the show. So, we have Rose who is to go on and track down... Uh, of course, Jed here within his dream sequences. So come to find out Jed is to eventually be told by Miranda because she's kind of like his, uh, if you want to go with an X-Men uh, kind of play of things, Miranda is basically uh, the Charles Xavier to Jed's X-Men character. Miranda is to go on and guide Jed and tell him what to do and try to have him be safe. So Jed is to go on and do this mission to go against the Pied Piper. And Jed is to go on and use his sand to go on and appear and defeat the Pied Piper. And then go on and uh, like eventually have his successful win uh, to then have to be forced to go back. Uh, to his horrible real life, where uh, we now have the social worker that is ha is to make a, a call, uh, uh, an appearance here at uh, Jed's old home, so that way she can go on and eventually see like how like uh, things are going within this new home to see if it's healthy and safe and whatever, because. Rose is trying to go on and put out flyers trying to find her brother. And it seems to the point where Rose is even going on to bringing this flyer to the social worker that is to go and see if this home is safe for Jed uh, and he's happy there uh, to then uh, try and see if maybe uh, the social worker should reconnect Jed with rose again so but we have this dream sequence and rose eventually is to go on with the sandman to find jed and the sandman is to of course be excited within this dream sequence because jed of course is to be playing the sandman as a hero he has this kind of hourglass thing on his uh on his shirt and I'm like, what is this, like the Hour Man? <laughs> like, uh, or the Minute Man? Or, or whatever that uh, one uh, character used to be. Um, I don't know if it was a DC character or not, but I think they had like an Hourglass or like a Minute Man character that I think they ended up using in Stargirl. And so I, at first I thought that's what it was, but then no, it actually ends up being uh, that uh, this kid is actually just being the Sandman. We also, so that way I, I can say that I actually know what I'm talking about, even though I made that one simple mistake with one character. We had Jed, when he was a younger Jed, was to have this character on his shirt uh, when he was younger. He had this white shirt on and it had a character on it. That character is none other than Static Shock. That character that is actually to be put onto that shirt is actually from a cartoon called Static Shock. And that, of course, was a milestone character that is going to at some point go on and be a live action version, an animated thing. I'm not quite sure yet what they're doing with that character, but they're going to do something. Uh, I guess hence why slapping the shirt on there. Um, because eventually they might get interest of, uh, eventually people who are fans of, of knowing that character. But I, uh, I liked Static Shock. I enjoyed that show. And I think, um, the same guy, or yeah, it is the same guy. The same guy that goes on and does the voice for Jon Stewart in the Justice League show also does the voice for Static Shock in the Static Shark cartoon. You can go ahead and check it up. Check it if you want to. I know it is what it is. Uh, I know that that person does that voice. I think his name is Phil Lamar. 
Um, I apologize if I that's incorrect, but I think it's Phil Lamar. Anyways, uh, but there is that. Anyways, there's a lot of sh in this episode. There's there's a lot of sh to cover. Anyways, Jed is the the Sandman. The Sandman is going and just be so excited that he's seeing this kid in the superhero costume, and he really is a Sandman. Plus, also, with how I said before, how in Smallville there is a slight, tweakingly different variation of the Sandman out there, uh, we can start to see that maybe at some point Sandman does eventually, even in this show, have a variation of himself, even if it's in a dream sequence. So, we go on to have Jed, who is thinking that the threat is to be Rose and the Sandman character. And so when Miranda finds out that the real Sandman is here, um, wait a minute, wait, 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 what did I just say? Um, we have Galt, um, who is in the Miranda body, technically, is to notice that the Sandman has arrived and that... She is going to try to protect Jed um, by, like, falling on the sword here to eventually have Galt just kind of give up to the Sandman and say, like, okay, you caught me. Like, I was uh, I was giving this kid, um, like, this, like, happy dream because of his real life being um, horrible and I want to kind of even things out. So... The Sandman is to go on and take Galt and eventually is to be upset with her because she should be a nightmare character and is instead going on and giving this kid pleasant dreams. And so because of this defiance, we have Sandman who is going to put Galt in the dark for a thousand years and like see if she'll be begging the Sandman to go on and do what she had done before. And Galt is just like, well, no, like it's like, if anything, that'll be way better than me going on and terrorizing, um, these kids again. And we have Sandman who justifies the whole nightmare thing in a good way. Uh, and I also want to easily come to speaking of the real Ghostbusters, uh, the Sandman is to kind of say, like, well, like, if a kid gets nightmares and ends up building character, it makes him a stronger person, so on and so forth. That's what the nightmares are there for. We also have in the real Ghostbusters, the Halloween door, Halloween special, we have the phrase, uh, if you aren't afraid, it can't hurt you. And so I use that a lot. It'll pop up some point when eventually... I do horror things and or supernatural stuff. That phrase will always be a thing I'll always use um, because I watched that hundreds upon hundreds of times when I was young anyways. So uh, the phrase, if you're not afraid, it can't hurt you basically means that um, like you need to fight that fear to be able to get over uh, and eventually like kind of grow as a person. And so that's kind of what Sandman is saying here, that these people are to have to grow um, and, f and face their fears to eventually figure out a way to either overcome them or eventually crumble and fall and die. Uh, and that feels what is to be fairly close to what Jed is going on and doing by the end of this episode. Because we, of course, have uh, the Corinthian that is to make his way to find where Jed is. Because we go on and we have Jed who is telling Rose that he lives in a place called Homeland. And Rose is like, what does that mean? What does Homeland mean? And so eventually by the time that uh, this dream sequence ends and Rose wakes up, she's like, what the f is Homeland? So she tries to search it, she tries to figure out, and she can't really understand what really this means. And so 
We also had a moment where Lucien was to talk to the Sandman and mention to him that at some time certain characters, like, things for them do change. Like, Lucien is to mention that at some point uh, she had changed to who she was to now watching over uh, the Sandman's library. And we, of course, have Dream who's just like, well... Like, yeah, that's great and all, but you go back to your books now. Like, I know you would go on and control a lot of things here, but, like, goodbye. Like, stop talking to me. Like, stop telling me that things could be different in time, because go away. Like, I don't want to hear, like, your back talk. <laughs> Plus, also, the Sandman has a lot on his plate right now, so he really just doesn't want to hear, like, oh, here's another job that you have to do to try to change and uh make this person different now um so maybe by the end of this show we'll have dream who's like hey like i realized after all the things that's going on that i was wrong and let's 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 release this girl and do what she wants because it'll make her happy and it'll make me happy anyways so within these episodes we have the Corinthian who is to meet up with uh, Barnaby and Clarence or, or Clarice and I'm assuming kill them off pop the rise out and he eventually goes on to collect Jed in this episode and because we of course have uh, the Corinthian who was to meet up with Hall Carter who had uh, this paper saying like, well, hey, if you can spot this kid, call us and eventually we'll, uh, we'll go on to, to try to reunite Rose with Jed here. So, Hall of, or Hal, I keep getting Hall and Hal confused. It's one L, but anyways, we have Hal that is to uh, go on and speak with Rose and uh, be uh, tempted to want to go on and and have Hal eventually get this guy's number. So we so we have the Corinthian who has Jed, and that all is going to come into uh, the next thing where I'm probably sure the Sandman is going to have to finally fight the Corinthian. So it feels like we have to do everything in like the kind of way that it kind of sets everything up. And so the Fiddler's Green will probably be the last thing that the Sandman is probably going to have to face. Because, again, I think probably perfect of order of how they set everything up to knock it all down uh, would be the rational way about going about things. With that said... um. I'm trying to think if there's anything left that I need to go on and cover uh, for this episode. I think uh, I think that's about good enough. Like, I spent an hour and change talking about everything that happens in here. There's probably something that's going to be slipping and in, in, in falling along the cracks because there's a lot of stuff going on in all these episodes. I bashed the sh out of it. I realize that. I apologize. It's. I knew that this one was going to be all over the place. Uh, so I apologize for how mad dash this all was to just try to get this all out. But really also thinking about it, I'm sure once I turn this off and I call this one a review, I'm sure it's going to be like, oh, there's 20 different things that I all didn't say uh as we go into here so hence why if i go into this tomorrow i can have a whole rebuttal mentioning oh yeah these 18 things here plop i forgot all these uh and you can also let me know in the comments below because that's fine also because eventually uh again i'll have a rebuttal if i forgot something and eventually i'll be like oh yeah i forgot about this because there's a ton of stuff going on in this one as far as, like, the dream sequences go, like, there might have been something that I forgot about there also. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, let me know in the comments below if there's something that I forgot about, and I'll rebuttal it the very next day uh, if I go on and see the, the comment, because maybe things will happen fast, and maybe they'll happen slow. 
But anyways, uh, we're almost wrapping up the show. Uh, I think that this show, honestly, is to probably go well enough to justify a second season. But with kind of how Warner Brothers is doing things, I think they're kind of cutting ties with everything. So who knows? Um, it seems like The Wit the Witcher is going well, and that's a Netflix thing. Um I just don't see the Sandman like being as strongly like it's not like always hugely trending. It's not like a squid game thing where like everybody is coming on to Netflix to just watch the Sandman. Um, but I think eventually uh, people are kind of slow to understand what this show really is. And eventually we'll figure out that it's a comic book thing. And they're like, oh, wow, the Sandman. I got to go on to this and see what this is. Uh, but if anyways, thank you for going on and seeing this video. Because a lot of sh was said. Um, so I apologize for how it was all over the place. Uh, but yeah, but these episodes were kind of all over the place. So uh, with that said, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.